I'd like to uh, now introduce you to uh, somebody that uh, ran for the U.S. House of Representatives and uh, it really uh, was devastating that he didn't make it this time around. And he is one of those individuals that I know will be a star in the future. And please, without further ado, if B.J. Lawson is around. B.J., where are you? Ladies and gentlemen, B.J. Lawson. Thank you. Wow, this is a much bigger crowd than I ever saw on the campaign trail last fall. For some reason, a Republican running in District 4 doesn't get this kind of reception, but it's about time, isn't it? If you followed my campaign at all, you might have heard that I was this guy who was passing out this little book. And honestly, I'm not a politician. I didn't go up against our 22-year incumbent, David Trice, with the idea of being a politician. I was just sick and tired of seeing a government that bore absolutely no resemblance to what I and everybody else here signed up for in our Constitution. Amen? And I didn't win, but we gave out 50,000 copies of our Declaration of Independence and Constitution, and we talked a lot about the issues that really matter, which for me, honestly, the reason that I ran for office was because of money. It was because of economics. I started out as a surgical resident. I left residency to start a hospital software company. And in the process of starting that company, I started to ask basic questions about how the business world worked. I'd never been in business before. I'd never studied economics. So here I am raising money to start a new business, and I start to ask a basic question like, hey, where does money come from anyway? And I admit, I'm an engineer, I'm a bit of a geek, so I like to diagram things and put things into systems and understand how things work. And when I began to follow that question to its end, I began to realize 10 years ago that we are all on a ride that does not end well. And it is up to all of us to recognize that the true answer to this is a public dialogue and comprehension about the very nature of our monetary, banking and economic system itself. Because we're not seeing, I see a few people have been reading along with me, and I really hope that more do, because what we're seeing, folks, this crisis that we're experiencing in our economy, the loss of our liberties, both economic and civil, a government that grows without boundaries, this is not the first time this has happened in American history. I actually, I pulled a quick quote, and I'm not much into quotes, but this one was pretty good if I can find it. <laughs> This was written by a gentleman named Peter Cooper, who was a 19th century industrialist who actually you know, produced things, he did useful things, had a business in, in New York, and he founded Cooper Union. But he wrote in a book in 1883 the following. One of the best business lessons I learned some 65 years ago at the time of what was then known as General Jackson's War upon the United States Bank. I thought that I saw, as did General Jackson, the terrible danger which resulted from allowing corporations to control the money of the country. Even in the hands of a good man, such an institution as the Second United States Bank, chartered with the privilege of controlling capital, as it did, issue four dollars in paper for every dollar it controlled by its charter. This bank had the privilege of opening a branch in every state with authority to issue what was called United States money, based upon this charter. This charter was obtained by giving $1.5 million to the government, and as Mr. Benton says in his history of 30 years in Congress, this is great, the advocates of that bank spent $3 million in bribing senators, members of the House of Representatives, and editors of newspapers for the accomplishment of their purpose. Does this sound like a rerun or what? Anyone paying attention to Goldman Sachs? And the lineage of folks that come out of Goldman Sachs to work in our humble treasury department? Yeah. Folks, this is beyond tax cheating. This is treason. Yeah. And I see a lot of people here who understand and are rightfully frustrated by this. And I ask you and I implore you that we not let this energy evaporate and that we look at what we're doing as a dialogue that absolutely, and this is critical, this dialogue absolutely must transcend party lines, okay? 
because this game has been played throughout our nation's history. And every time this game is played, the folks who run the banks and control the access to money and credit and to enforce the, her, the heinous income tax that all of us slave away for, these people depend on us as Americans dividing ourselves into Democrats and Republicans and beating ourselves up. The problems we're experiencing didn't start a couple months ago. They didn't even start a couple of years ago. They've been with us since at least 1913 and getting more severe ever since. We need to reach across the aisle at a local level. I've given up waiting for the Republican Party to change things. I've certainly never expected the Democratic Party to change things. But the parties are the people, and we as the people must get out and talk with our neighbors and help people understand that true prosperity must, must stem from local prosperity. We need to start right here in Wake County, in the 4th District, in wherever we are from, and we need to take our local economy back. Amen? Some people have asked, what have you been doing since the election? Well, other than crawling off and licking my wounds and getting very depressed and you know, looking at myself several times every day in the mirror and saying, you're okay, you're okay, you're okay. I, I did that for about a week. I then began to realize that, you know what? This is still a great place to live, right? We can still have a gathering like this. Yes, we had to get permits. Yes, I don't think I'm allowed to exercise my right to bear arms right here, but we can still have a gathering. And the sun still comes up. If you plant a seed in the springtime in North Carolina, it'll grow, right? So what I've been focusing on is I've actually been reaching out a little bit beyond my comfort zone and working with a bunch of forward-thinking activists to literally resurrect a local currency. And this currency was started with the best intentions about six or seven years ago. It's called the Plenty. It circulated to some extent among local businesses, but it was a voluntary fiat currency based upon nothing but faith. It didn't work so well, right? Because obviously everyone took the paper money, they went to the person who was selling the most valuable stuff, i.e. the local grocery store who was accepting it. The grocery store got all the money, but they didn't have enough suppliers who would take it. So it didn't quite work. But we're changing the model. We're, re we, we're reintroducing the plenty as a local currency that will circulate within our local economy in partnership with a good local bank. And yeah, there are some of those. And it will actually start out being redeemable for Federal Reserve notes. So I decided I'm no longer going to use the government's money. I've about had it with that. And we might stop it. We might start here, but we're not going to end here because we can also begin to create private currencies that monetize local agricultural commodities, gold, silver, other things, and we can trade among ourselves and show the government that no, money does not have to be based upon debt. And in fact, free, prosperous societies reject money that's based upon debt. And I would ask that you, if you're looking for more information, you can visit theplenty.org to learn more about this initiative. We're launching it in Chatham County, soon to be in Orange and Wake as well. And I think it's something that we can all do to take back a meaningful amount of control and exercise again, remember what some of our economic freedoms really are. I wanted to close, since this is tax day, and, and since I did file an extension this year, I'm still not sure if I'm going to pay. No, I will. Don't, you, you got that on tape. Of course I'm going to pay. But it was such a horrible year financially, the good news is I'm getting pretty much everything I sent them back. So I consider that a small victory. But here's the bottom line, folks. The income tax, to me as a thinking individual, makes absolutely no sense. I wish, I wish that I'd been born a corporation. Right? Now, when a corporation pays taxes, this is not a trick question, does a corporation pay taxes on their revenue or their profit? Their profit, right? They take in income, but they have expenses that they have to pay off, and they're only taxed on the difference, on the profit. Now, if I'm working, if I'm an employee, if I am trading my time for someone's salary, let's think about that for a minute. They're giving me my salary but I gave up something in return. What did I give them? 
I gave them my time, right? I'm that many hours closer to dying and never seeing my kids again. That doesn't sound like a profit to me. That sounds like an even exchange. I can't detect any profit there, can you? We need to fundamentally change, stand up against, and reject the private debt-based monetary system that's been foisted upon us, upon which the IRS is praying, and we need to stand up for government that, as Dr. Munger said, is small enough to fit it within our United States Constitution. Thank you very much. Peter Lawson.